Hey, this is Brian. Thanks for watching Keys. In today's video, I'm going to show you step by step how to install Dynan's brand new carbon fiber intake for the S58 powered M2, M3, and M4. The Dynan S58 carbon fiber intake is available in either gloss or a matte finish for max underhood bling. It flows 12% better than stock for better performance, and it's also compatible with our Keys executive line strut brace, which we're gonna install while we're there. If you're looking to pick one up for your car, be sure to visit us at keys.com or see the description where we have links to all the products used, torque specs, and tools with that. Let's get started with the installation using Daler's G81 wagon all the way from Germany. The first part of the process is we need to open the hood. If you haven't done it yet, all you need to do is simply reach in and pull the lever twice. Now that the hood's open, we can work on removing the factory intake, but we have a pesky brace in the way, so let's remove that. It has a 13 millimeter in the front, and then there's four 15s on this side and four 15s on that side. Okay, then once all the nuts and bolts are removed, you can remove it. Sometimes they're a little bit tight, which is another benefit of the keys one, which is coming later in the video. This one though, pops right off. Next, we'll start on the driver's side. So to remove this side of the intake, we're going to remove this rivet over here and this one. So to do so, just take a little trim tool, slide it in, and then it'll pull up just like that. Next, we're gonna get the engine cover out of the way. It's held on by four grommets. It's always best to work each corner by itself to make sure nothing's going to break. But as you can see, there's one here, 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 and over here. Now to give yourself a little bit more space, you wanna remove this connection as well. Simply press on the little tab over here and over here, squeeze that, and then pull it straight off and then just set it out of the way. Now with the dining intake, what's unique about it is it leverages the factory lower portion of the air box. So at this point, you can either remove the entire air box by just pulling the whole thing up, or you can unscrew it, which we're gonna have to do anyway. So while it's on the car, I'm just going to go around and remove all of these T25 screws along the perimeter. All right, so then once you've released them all, don't worry, they won't fall out, they're gonna stay in place. Um, just make sure that everything is loose. And then at the bottom of the intake, there's a little C-clip which actually holds it onto the turbo. So what you wanna do is reach down, release the clip by just pulling it back with a pick tool or a tool that looks just like this, and then you'll be able to just pull that straight off. Then carefully remove the whole thing. Okay, then you can just take your paper air filter and simply remove it. Then we can do the exact same thing on the other side. Now it's a little bit hard to see in some of these areas, so I wanna explain what we're doing. If you look at the turbo, you'll see that it has this little part where it ramps up and then there's a groove right here. If you look at the intake, this C-clip is what actually holds everything in place and sits in the groove. There's a mounting point here, 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 and over here. So what happens when you pull the C-clip up, what it does is it makes it so that you can pull everything off. And then when you wanna go put it back on, all you need to do is just reinstall everything like that. And then it'll slide over and it'll click into place. Now on the Dynan inlets, they are a little bit different. They don't have this elaborate C-clip, but if you ever need to reinstall your factory unit, that's how you do it. At this point, take the longer inlet and this is going to slide. And this little lip is actually going to catch that exact same groove. So slide this on till you hear it pop into place like that. You can see that it is nice and secure. And then you can tighten down the clamp. Then you're gonna take your other inlet. I'm gonna pop this on as well. And then once that's in place, you can tighten down the clamp. Next, we're going to do some pre-assembly on the table and then we'll drop the intake in. First thing is this little bracket. As you can see, it has these little recessed screws for these little screws that have a 2.5 millimeter hex head. So simply take this and just very carefully twist these into the carbon. Don't go too tight because again, they are just thrift nuts in carbon. Then what we're going to do is take these little rubber inserts. As you can see, they have a cutout. This one goes on here. It's going to actually go around this outer portion right here. If you have the wrong one, the shape simply will not line up. So make sure you have the right one. Pop this over like that. 
And this is so the carbon isn't rubbing on the carbon. And then we'll do the same on the other side. For this next part, you wanna do it on a soft surface to make sure you're not going to scratch your brand new carbon fiber intake. But essentially, what you wanna do is find the correct side. The angle is going to look like that. So then once you've figured out which side is which, you're gonna turn this upside down and we're going to install one of the filters. Now the filters are exactly the same, so you don't have to worry about using the wrong one. You just wanna make sure that you have easy access to the clamp. Then tighten the clamp down. Again, not too hard, it is just carbon. And then we'll do the same on the other side. Next, we wanna make sure that that carbon does not get scratched. As you can see, there are a number of pretty sharp areas. So we're gonna take some microfibers and lay them down to prevent any damage. Next, take the smaller clamps. We're gonna put them on the inlet. We're just gonna set it on. Now, it's about to get really tight really quick. So what I would recommend is if you have a seven mil, it's going to stay on a lot easier. It's gonna be much easier than using a flat head, especially with the awkward angles. So I'm gonna go grab the intake. We're going to line these up first, make sure that this is good, and then line everything else up, then start to tighten everything down. Now, as you can see, the holes didn't line up exactly, and that's because we just need to shimmy this around. I have this little tool that's uh, for gaskets and seals. So if you just slightly maneuver this around, it should help you get it on a little bit easier. All right, so I have these all positioned. All I need to do now is tighten them down. You can also see I have all of these screw holes lined up, so we're good over here as well. All right, so now that we're this far, what you wanna do is take these little rubber washers, put them on this T25 screw, and then reinstall all of the screws all along both intakes. Okay. And don't overdo it, snug is completely tight enough. Before you're done, don't forget to reinstall this. And with that, the dining intake is fully installed and it already looks so good. But while we're this far, we might as well add a Keys Executive Line Brace for the S58. Everything's fully installed, it looks amazing, but how does it sound? Let's start it up and give it some revs. So as you just heard, not only does it look amazing under the hood, but it sounds great while you're driving too. If you're interested in one for your car, be sure to see the link down in the description. Visit us at keys.com. Make sure to like this video, share it with your friends. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.